Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another misconception video. I had made the video on Ascendant Lord yesterday. And one person told me that, why don't you make a similar video on Rahu? I was like, yeah, it's a good idea, actually. We can discuss Rahu. So there are many misconceptions about Rahu also, like uh, any other area in astrology. And there are a lot, actually. Actually, the problem with Rahu is not in the details. The problem with Rahu is in the, uh, in the essence, actually. Rahu is misunderstood in essence, actually. So in essence, we have to understand what Rahu is. So when I say Rahu, I don't mean to say your Rahu Dasha. Because the moment you hear Rahu, you start thinking, oh, my Rahu Antar Dasha. He's going to talk about what will happen in my Antar Dasha now. Okay. No, the first rule and the last rule <laughs> uh, in learning astrology is you have to keep aside your horoscope uh, 24 hours. Uh, if you just keep thinking uh, every video and try to link it with your horoscope, you won't learn astrology for the next thousand years. And that is why many people, they watch astrology videos, they take astrology courses, they have mentors, but they never learn astrology. Why? Because they never learned it. Because they just want to know about their own chart. Now, it's not bad, of course, but to obsess with every other detail about your horoscope. People do this with Rahu especially. That's why I'm saying, all right. So what does Rahu represent in general? Rahu represents so many things. In one word, it represents material desire. Okay. He is the uh, co-lord of Aquarius, which shows materialistic desires. Now, material desire, every planet shows some material desire. But why do I say Rahu shows material desire? Why? Rahu can show those materialistic desires, which to fulfill, you have to break some, uh, some of the uh, prescriptions and uh, recommendations of the scripture. So Rahu represents the black zone, actually. Okay? Mercury Venus represents a uh, gray zone. Okay? Gray means something is uh, white and something is black. Let's take an example of Venus. So sometimes people say um, Venus can uh, show infidelity. No, never. Venus never shows infidelity. Venus, uh, Venus is not the karaka for love and romance. He is, but he's primarily the karaka for uh, the seventh house, which is the house of marriage. Because Venus wants you to continue your um, dynasty, all right? <laughs> your big bunch where you are born. So. Therefore, he wants to get you married. That is why people, they get married in Venus Dasha. But sometimes they wonder, oh, I'm running Venus. Why didn't I get into a love romance relationship with somebody? Well, it's Venus. Venus is the Karaka for the seventh house. He's not the Karaka for the fifth house. Okay. Anyways, so why is Mercury Venus gray? Because, so in that case, if you take sexuality, for example, Venus is, uh, the white part of Venus is, where you are, you know, uh, staying with one person faithfully, loyally, all right. That's the white part. But then if you are indulging too much, then that becomes Rahu, okay. So if you are not being committed to one person and you are hopping like dogs from one person to another, then that's Rahu actually, okay. So every planet can be influenced by uh, Rahu, okay. Now, again, I don't mean to say if your Venus is with Rahu, you are a cheater, you are a liar, you are a thug, you are a rascal, you are an idiot, you are a criminal. I'm not saying that. Okay. So what I'm saying is these Rahu traits can come. So Rahu is boundary. Okay. So this is the marriage. Marriage is like one person. Okay. So when you step out of the boundary, that is the uh, breach of code of conduct because then uh, you are um, you are breaking the vows of marriage, which you were taken in front of Agni Dev and Lord Vishnu. So you will be punished for that, either now or later in this life, or in some other lifetime. There's severe punishment awaiting for those who indulge in all these animalistic activities. So similarly, watching pornography and all this. So this this comes under Rahu. So this is an example of Venus, Venusian things getting influenced by Rahu. So that's why these two are black and white, right? 
I'm wearing black, but gray. <laughs> but Rahu represents the black desires. Primarily, it is black, you know, like for example, prostitution, going and indulging uh, just for physical pleasure with somebody. Or nowadays, you know, these one night stands and all these things. So, whatever. Uh, nowadays, or from last 20, 30 years. So, these are things which are prohibited uh, for civilized human beings. Okay? So, um, now the thing is what does rahu represent desire wise he represents temptations basically okay temptation to uh, rahu is not an individual planet you have to try to understand rahu is what basically rahu is the north node of the moon okay so north node so every planet is governed by the moon moon is the most important planet in astrology okay so every planet is under the control of the moon and Rahu is like the North Node. So Rahu is the one who tries to control the moon, which means Rahu tells all the planets that you must do what I say. That will make you happy. All right. So that's what Rahu does sometimes. So this is what uh, is an understanding of Rahu. Okay. And Jupiter, how, how does Rahu spoil Jupiter? Okay. Rahu can spoil Jupiter also um, if you are not careful. Rahu can spoil you by uh, giving uh, doubts. The biggest, uh, Rahu can make you a skeptic actually. Not healthy skeptic, you know, it's like uh, stupid skeptic. Stupid skeptic means he's doubting everything. You know? Like, uh, let me give you an example. There's one person once I met. So I had quoted a shloka and from the Bhagavad Gita. So then this person asked me, so what's the proof that this is there in Bhagavad Gita? So I said, look, uh, in this chapter, this shloka, this is there. Okay. So he was a skeptic basically, but he was an idiotic uh, virgin. Okay. Why? Because then he asked me, okay, what is the proof that uh, what you are saying is right? Then I went to a website where I showed the exact word to word translation of this shloka in Sanskrit. He said, what is the proof that this website is correct? And then I said, well, you see who has made these uh, pages in the website that these people are very highly qualified. And then the person says, what is the proof that their degrees are valid? So he's like asking proof for every freaking thing. You know, one day he will ask, what is the proof that you are living? So um, anyway, so that's an example of how Rahu spoils Jupiter. Rahu can give you a feeling that you cannot trust anybody in this world. All right. So this is essentially what Rahu is. But there are still so many misconceptions when it comes to Rahu. Number one thing is uh, people think that Rahu is only a bad planet, which means Rahu Dasha will be terrible. No, 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 never. If Rahu is linked with good houses, then it will be good. If Rahu is linked with bad houses, it will be bad. Okay. Again, good and bad for what? A planet in 10th house can get you divorced. So, is a planet in 10th house good? Well, it's great for career, but for marriage, the worst placement to have. All right. Never a planet in 10th house is good for marriage. Never, never, never in the next thousand years, in the next million years. Planet in 6th house, again, divorce. But is it good for celibacy? Great, fantastic. Is it good for job? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, there you go. So, depending on the, the event that you want, you have to check if Rahu is associated with those houses or the denial of those houses. Then Rahu will be good or Rahu will not be good. Okay. Now, yes, universally, there are, uh, there are two houses, which is the 5th and ninth, which is good for everything and anything. There is nothing uh, which uh, the fifth house and the ninth house denies, okay? But except them, uh, and to some extent the eleventh house, because it's the house of gain. The eleventh house can give you too much materialistic desires, which can uh, cause you to do some almodi things. So, Palastra says trines five and nine, okay? They are the only auspicious houses. Unanimously, they are auspicious, which means they support any good thing in life, okay? And they suppress bad things. So if you want to murder somebody and if you have a prominent ninth house, it's a bit difficult because you're thinking that uh, that's, that person is like, a, uh, is lay, that God is that person's father also. Okay, So then how can I kill? So it's like a uh, task there. All right. So that's an example. So if Rahu is linked with good houses for that particular area of life. So sometimes people ask, okay, I have Rahu in uh, seventh house. What will happen? So anything can happen. Seventh house, if you are 25 plus in India, then you might get married during that dasha. If you are like 50 plus, then the probability that you will get married again is less. 
So then you use Desh Kalpatra. So then what do you do at the age of 50? You might start some business. That's what uh, you, you might do. Or maybe if you have had a divorce, you might also get married. Who said you can't get married at 50? So, so that's what I'm telling. So before you judge uh, that Rahu is always bad, it's not the case. Now, another misconception is people say Rahu is the best planet. You know, Dasha is going to be most wonderful. No, it's not like that. Again, it's like uh, the things where, which Rahu indicates, those are the things that will happen. But one thing you should unanimously take care of is that um, you should be careful that you are not crossing your limits in Rahu Dasha. This is one thing you can take care of from your side. Of course, whatever happens will happen that you cannot stop. But do not cross over the boundary. Okay, because Rahu cannot trouble you, cannot give you suffering, cannot torment you unless you cross the boundary. He can only give you an allurement. Hey, look, 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 look. I'm, I'm calling you. Come, 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 come. But it's up to you. You go or not. Okay. So, if you do not cross the boundaries which the scriptures have set for human life, and I'm assuming you are a human or you are in your human's body because you are watching this, right? Uh, so then Rahu cannot trouble us actually. Okay. Now, sometimes uh, the another misconception is you know. Uh, Rahu, Rahu is bad in uh, certain houses. Okay, so they say Rahu is very bad in the seventh house. No, not necessarily. Rahu is bad. In, uh, what can Rahu do in the seventh house? Rahu in the seventh house, in that dasha provided, okay, can give you a spouse who is from a different religion or different uh, different background, or, or there is no similarity in your culture. But does this mean that the marriage will be ruined? No, not necessarily. You can have a divorce if uh, if a Bengali marries another Bengali. Then they, they might also have a divorce after six months. Or if a Punjabi marries, you know, a person from um, South India, or Tamilian, they, they might have a great marriage. Who knows, right? So it's not that Rahu is bad in the seventh house. Now, another house they say Rahu is bad uh, is they say Rahu is bad in the fifth house. Rahu is not bad in the fifth house. Uh, Rahu can give you uh, interest in cultures which are foreign to you. Okay, so another bad placement they say is Rahu is bad in the ninth house. No, that that's not true. Uh, that only happens when the ninth house and eighth house are somehow linked. Actually, okay. Ha. Huh. Now Rahu, if linked with the ninth house, or if Rahu is conjunct the ninth lord, okay, or the Karaka for the ninth house, Jupiter or Sun, it can make you a bit skeptical. It can make you. But it is up to you to what extent you let that uh, ruin you. Okay, like this person, I give an example, the, like uh, idiotic uh, behavior, like a narcissistic behavior. Anytime I give an answer, just questioning, what is the proof that this is right? This is right. This is right. So, can you trust anybody in this world if that is kind of your behavior? Okay. Now, I'm not saying that you should never question anybody. You should not question your guru or somebody like this. Never ever I have said that. You can always question. There is no problem. I have asked a thousand million questions to my Shiksha Gurus. All the time. I keep doing it now. So I the phone and just bang, bang, bang. These are my questions. Please, can, could you please kindly answer? <laughs> but that should be done in a mood of humility and reverence and respect. You cannot ask questions like bloody dogs. Then Rahu is ruining you. Because Rahu is scrapping. Because see, Jupiter is faith. Okay? Jupiter is trust. So, if Rahu is linked to the ninth, then what can happen is uh, that trust element can be missing. Okay, because I've seen people with Jupiter Rahu, they say this is Chandalyog, but I have seen the, I've done a lot of research on Chandalyog, and I found what is the problem actually. It is not that they they are bad people, but sometimes their level of skepticism goes to such an extent it it goes up to stupidity actually. Okay? They doubt everybody. They doubt their mother, father, you know. Sister, brother, husband, wife, they don't spare anybody. They don't doubt themselves also. So, but for some areas, it can be helpful. So, suppose uh, if, if you're like Jupiter is well placed or Sun is well placed, you know, the ninth lord is well placed, and then you have Rahu in the ninth, okay, and the Lagnesh is well placed, you know, Lagnesh, very important. Then, what can happen is um, this can empower you and if somehow you have dharma karma dipati yoga also provided this is like a best case scenario i'm giving you and then you have rahu in the ninth then this can be a very good placement why because 
then Rahu can empower you to uh, understand so many things which normally a person cannot understand. So, for example, you, you might go into detail of different philosophies. For example, like in uh, Vedic tradition, we have the concept of, you know, like Devatas. So, we have Indra. Indra is known as the who, one who has thunderbolt, okay. Then, uh, then we have Agni Dev, you know, then we have uh, Surya Dev. So, if you go to Greek philosophy, you will see there is Apollo. Okay? Apollo is there. Apollo, if I remember, is the sun god. Okay, if I remember, I don't know. If I'm wrong, you can correct me down. And Zeus is, uh, if I remember, he's the god of lightning or something like this. You know, then uh, there is Aphrodite there. Okay, so here also we have similar examples in the Vedas. So, so that's what I'm telling. There is, we have the example of Ananchesh uh, in the Vedic tradition. And then there is Hydra in uh, Greek philosophy. Okay. So if you have a very good horoscope for spirituality and then you have Rahu in the line, then bang on, what you can do is, if you go to Greece or you go to Europe, you can, you know, understand things very fast. You can, you know, it's like everything connects very fast. Okay. But, but if the horoscope is not good, if you, if you have proclivity to uh, cheat or, you know, to be too much skeptical, unnecessarily, it's like uh, to, level of, to a level of stupidity. Then this is the worst placement you can have, Rahu in the nine. Because then you cannot trust your Padpadastya Guru, you cannot trust God, you cannot trust your Shiksha Guru, you cannot trust your Diksha Guru, you cannot trust your Acharyas, you cannot trust your father, you cannot trust your mother, you cannot trust yourself. Now what to speak of your spouse? How can you ever trust your spouse, right? So, uh, and then another misconception is Rahu is very good in the 10th or 11th. Not necessarily. That will happen if the overall horoscope is very strong and the person is committed. Okay. Otherwise, Rahu in 10th can make you do things because, see, always Rahu is the allurement which is outside of the boundary. Okay. So, if the overall horoscope is not good, there is not strength of character and morality, then this Rahu in 10th is the worst placement you can get. Why? Because then Rahu is alluring you to get name, fame, status. So, Quick money. Have you seen those people losing, you know, billions, uh, millions overnight in stocks, you know, share market and all this? Yes, these people have Rahu in the tent. Now they may say, oh, Rahu is sudden. So suddenly things can be up, but then again things are down suddenly because Rahu Ketu represents things which are sudden actually. Okay. So, and the same is with the 11th house. They say Rahu's best placement is the 11th house. That is true for that particular house and for Rahu, but is it good for the overall horoscope? So, for example, if a person is a cheater, then what is happening is the person is going on making superficial connections and Rahu is superficial. Wherever Rahu is, there can be some element of superficiality there. So, 11th house shows your you know friends and network circles. So, you're just making superficial friends. You, you don't have genuine connections. Now, is it good? Is it good to have five close most loving and deep loyal friends or to have 5000 strange friends who you never know like for example people tell me that uh, they have started out on instagram or on youtube uh, but they are not getting followers and subscribers so then they ask me that uh, in your opinion what you should do uh, what i should do then i said well you should be yourself do what you like to do and then Whoever likes you will subscribe to you. You don't, you don't have to uh, artificially do something, you know. Uh, you can, of course, say, I also keep saying that if you are new, then subscribe. But that doesn't mean, you know, I'm like forcing somebody or pretending to be somebody who I am not actually. I'm just being myself. If people like me, then they will automatically subscribe. If people, they don't like me, they hate me, then they will not subscribe. They will speak badly about me in some forums or you know, some other YouTube channels or whatever it is. That's their life. That's their karma. It's my... I have nothing to do with that. So I said, do not change yourself for people. You know, be yourself and whoever tunes into your frequency, they will come and stay with you. Okay. They will never leave you. Whoever likes you and your frequency, never, ever, ever in the thousand lifetimes. Okay. So Rahu in the 11th can make you lonely. Oh my God, Rahu in 11th. I heard it was the best placement. Yes, for that house, you may have a lot of connections, but if you do not have a good second house, the sense of family is not there. 
you have a million subscribers but you will be the most lonely people and anything can happen if you're lonely right we keep seeing examples uh, these days especially so the thing is um, and then uh, same same is with uh, they say you know uh, rahu in the second house is bad they say so it's not bad necessarily it, if, if if it can mean that you are not close to the family where with who, where you were born okay but you if the overall horoscope is good the fifth house ninth house is good then you might have a family in a foreign land or you might have a uh, you might have a uh, you know stepmother or stepfather with whom you are very close okay or some uh, nearby somebody some uh, not relative because relatives are also seen from the second house but somebody very unusual you know it's like uh, you, you may have a friend who is you know like 30 years elder to you or you know 30 years uh, younger to you these these things can happen they may be like your family okay but yeah it can be a very bad placement if the overall chart is not good then your family you you like some people sometimes uh, they they are born in a family where the mother and father they are not faithful to each other okay so the father has indulged with another woman and the mother has uh, also indulged with another man so that that is the worst thing to happen to a child actually okay so then their own conception of chastity and purity and uh, because they lose faith in relationships in that case. Okay, they are very fearful. I have seen. Oh, my par my parent cheated. You know, I am also fearful. My partner also cheated on me or something like this. So that can be a very good bad placement. But if the overall chart is good, it can be a good placement. Okay. And another misconception is Rahu's conjunction with any planet is bad. No, not necessarily. Not that any blatant rule you apply like this. Okay. So for example, Moon Rahu conjunction. They say it is very bad. But uh, if it is well supported by other planets and if the overall chart is good, uh, it can uh, it can help you to understand things which normally people don't understand and that can make you very much successful. Okay. Similarly, is Jupiter and Rahu. Jupiter and Rahu, as I said, you know, trying to connect Vedic philosophy with Greek philosophy. These are examples which you can do. Okay. So these are some of the misconceptions and. Um, uh, people sometimes say debilitated Rahu is bad, exalted Rahu is good. Well, this is another misconception with every planet, I guess. Debilitated Rahu can be very good if uh, Rahu is a troublemaker in the horoscope. And exalted Rahu can be a big trouble if it is like a game changer. Okay. Uh, in the negative sense, I am saying. Okay. So, it depends. If you have an exalted Rahu in the sixth, you might indulge in affairs because you are breaking marriage and you are very good at seducing others. Okay. So is it good for you or is it bad for you? That's terrible because you are creating more sinful karma. Okay, So then that's not good. So blatant misconceptions. Rahu is always good in some houses. Rahu is very bad in some houses. All right. It never happens. All right. So this is it from my side. And yes, if you like my videos, then please subscribe to the channel. And if you want a consultation, please go to my website below. Exoticastrology.in and God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.